Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Ati Allah Ati Rasul wa Ulul Amri Minkum And always a reminder for myself and Abdul Ajeezu Da'eefu, Miskeenu, Zalim, Mujahal but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. The immensity of Allah's creation is something that we can't understand. And when they express that Allah works in mysterious ways, can't be understood. There's no time for Allah and in this world of light there is no time. And the world of light that governs this physical world which is based on time, the movement of the sun, the moon and the earth. That only Allah come into our lives and inspire realities from the heavens. Fardul Alam wa Fardul Arsh, Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, Sultanul Awliya, Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, Qaddas Sallallahu Siru is a soul in which created 7,000 years before Allah created any soul for wilayat and was partitioned that at all times out of 124,000 awliyaullah on this earth 7,007 would be from his way and his secret, his inheritance and that his nazar would be upon them. This was Allah's ancient partitioning and the immensity of that light, the immensity of that gift and that Mawlana Shaykh wrote in the books about Mawlana Shah Naqshaban that he promised that from that 7,007 I would open 12,000 realities within their being. And in this pursuit of reality many pray and hope for just one of those realities. From the knowledges of ilmu huruf, from the knowledges of the heart, from the knowledges of the Muhammadan haqqaiqs, all these oceans of reality that Mawlana Shah Naqshaban gives as an inheritance to his children, his… the ones whom are following that way destined and partitioned in an ancient… in an ancient reality. They were partitioned to be from Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah. And awliyaullah teaching that because that's… and there is no time in this linear equation of earth, there are many haqqaiqs that of an immense reality that Sayyidina Jonah, Sayyidina Yunus salam was given a prophecy and as his teaching the message is not reaching the people, the message is not moving the hearts of the people and they're not converting. And as a result of the story of Sayyidina Yunus salam he ran from his post. Said, it's enough, it's not nobody's coming, it's not working, I'm leaving. And set out on a ship that was setting out to an ocean. And again because Allah can do anything Allah wants, set out onto that ship and everyone knows the story, a storm began to come and they said, who here has done something wrong that now we're in the middle of a storm? And Sayyidina Yunus agreed that, no, no, I, I may, may have angered my Lord, this is a result of me and they said, okay, no problem and they threw him overboard. As a result of being thrown into this ocean, Allah describes a hoot, hoot, a whale came. And that whale came and put him into his reality, into his being. And then was set for a period of time and then was cast out onto a shore. 
Awliyaullah come and describe that the reality of that hoot that can appear any way Allah wants was the reality of Mawlana Shah Naqshband. And the importance of these understandings is that every messenger of Allah had an imperfection because perfection was only for Sayyidina Muhammad And Allah wants the creation to be in need of Sayyidina Muhammad So we described in other talks, when they were praying for power, the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad had to dress them. When Sayyidina Sulaiman needed power, Allah inspired his heart that you need from the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and they sent a ring, they sent a ring from the Sultan and that ring gave the power and the might of what was put under his command upon this earth. When Nabi Musa needed to part the sea, he was carrying the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad in his asa and was empowered by that and merely touched the Red Sea and the oceans parted. And many examples of prophecies even in Qur'an where Nabi Musa wanted to be taught of a higher reality and had to seek out the Muhammadan guides. So that those guides and regardless of the time period of their life because there's no time for Allah In the ruhaniyat they can appear on this timeline anytime Allah wants them to. You're talking about a, char- a reality that has no time appearing on a timed reality, it's nothing for Allah So means they can appear on this timeline however Allah wants them, go back to the beginning and sit with Sayyidina Adam, go all the way into judgment day and sit with the nation that at, at that time is facing judgment day. For Allah it's nothing from malakut. So means their souls can appear throughout this timeline guiding and directing the Muhammadan haqqaiq. This is the, the greatness of what Allah gave when we talked about the pearl, that I didn't leave this creation to destroy themselves, it's a gift to Sayyidina Muhammad So as a result of that gift Allah has empowered these souls to give their support however Allah wants and destines for them to give support. So Allah come to teach that they've been taught in that diwan and the diwan al-awliya that Mawlana Shah Naqshband it was his being that appeared in that ocean of Allah and that he was dispatched by Sayyidina Muhammad that perfect. And that's why Warasul Muhammadiyya and the Muhammadan guidance is the highest guidance. That all the prophecies and all the prophets of other nations were in need of the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's by virtue of Prophet dispatching his Muhammadan awliya. That that reality that Sayyidina Yunus was running from, not having that light of perfection that only teaching and not penetrating the hearts of people. As a result people not responding to the teacher, like you talk to somebody's ear. A professor talk to you all day long and you, you fall asleep, you're not listening to him, you're just words are coming out. Ran and awliyaullah come and teach that when he jumped into the ocean Allah sent the reality of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban and as a result his soul grabbed him and brought him into his reality. And in that reality he was trained because he went in as Sayyidina Yunus but came out as Zul Noon. He didn't go in as Zul Noon, he went in as Sayyidina Yunus He was dispatched out from the reality of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, the caretaker of the pearl, that you are now Zul Noon, we have activated your two noons. From that reality Mawlana Shah Naqshaban gave the whole understanding of insan and taught the reality of, of insan. 
that insan in the Arabic huruf and the Arabic huruf carries the reality and the secret of every word from what Allah ancient, ancient oceans. We don't have a paper to, to draw it. If you draw it on a paper I can just show it to the camera shit. Just the kanam and san. That the first noon that was given and the nur of the first noon was a light that was to give a teaching but not to bring out all its realities. If you give me the insan then I can talk about it. Just write the kalam insan, you write. Yeah just insan, yeah give it to me on this one. I don't know where that board is. <laughs> you missing Aleph? Okay. If Khalid is, is darker, <clears throat> teaching that this Aleph Noon seen is a secret, Aleph Noon. That this Noon in Arabic is for nur and light. So the one closest to you, the Aleph at the beginning is Divinely Presence. So your journey is never this way, your journey is from what's out going in. Inside. Is that dark? Yeah that's good. But you have to not put fancy writing, uh, each letter separate. Is each letter separate? Is it visible yes. on, the, on the camera? YouTube you can see? Yeah, inshaAllah. So then this noon is not, uh, is not sufficient for that light. It's a beginning light. You have that on the insan there? Yeah we had it, alhamdulillah. Yeah you stand right here, this is <laughs> your… this is your power, uh -huh. and sample of insan. Come, come this way closer, yeah, yeah you're right there, jolly, jolly green giant. They're green too. Can you see him? Yeah, okay. Huh? Nabi sallu alayhi salawatullahi antan Nur secret diya So alhamdulillah that, that reality of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban and the secret of that pearl of guidance that brought and was dispatched to go after Sayyidina Yunus salam. And from that is the reality and the opening and the secrets and the teachings of this word called insan, people, humanity. And that Allah what He wanted for us He put within the Arabic. So we talk all we want but its secret is in the huruf. So when Allah want to make somebody a saint, He teaches them the reality of the huruf. And this reality shows that Sayyidina Yunus only had his initial light of noon activated. So like the beginnings of faith, that light is not sufficient to guide people. That light gives you a little bit of understanding and speak to the heads of people which you go 99% of all YouTube now. So people come and say, oh, oh my kid has a shaykh and my other kid has a shaykh and they all have internet shaykhs. And we said before that you may be watching somebody but that may not be a person who's watching you and you just entertaining your head. 
I watch this shaykh, I watch this shaykh, my shaykh I watch this shaykh. But does that shaykh know you? So then you have no relationship with that shaykh, you're not emailing, communicating. So this relationship and this reality to open within our existence is requires an immense guidance, an immense light. From Mawlana Shah Naqshaban's realities that this light was not sufficient. And what Mawlana Shah Naqshaban brought of, that's why we say Murshid Kamil, of an ancient, ancient reality of perfection. The one that holds the lulu, holds the Divine Pearl and this is the diya. That our journey in life is that to open these two lights. So the two noons for the English coming and they don't know Arabic you don't have to. These are two noons that stand for light. And in our life Allah is giving just in the Arabic letters that, I created you to have these two lights and they have to be activated. Your life is to reach to a scene, to reach to a secret. And if you activate these realities and activate these lights, you reach to what they call insanic kamil, your kamil, they're perfecting with perfection your reality. So then this noon on the outside is your reflective light. And what they want us is that you have to journey towards the diya. So then in this is a sun and this is the moon. And that's why Allah gives the example of the sun and the moon that insan carries that reality. If you are just the understanding to be like a moon and then you didn't achieve more, you're only reflecting partially that reality means you have maybe a hikmah a little bit, little bit of wisdom, studied a little bit but it's not the, the way that Allah wanted it to be completed. So awliyaullah come and in their schools of taskiyah when they're inheriting from Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, one they have to know what insan stands for. So then this noon and this light is the lights of guidance. The student has to be brought into the realities of this secrets, the reality of the scene that they have to be dressed. They have to be dressed by ilmu yaqeen, knowledges of the heavens, aynu yaqeen. And they have to be taught from the visions of certainty. And as a result the oceans of haqq yaqeen begin to open within their heart. So means their path and the path of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban is based on the secret. So that the tariqah is based on opening the secret within everybody's heart and everybody has a scene, everybody has this secret. But the elements of the secret have to be the knowledges of certainty, that are you being fed knowledges of certainty? So when I'm watching, my kids are watching this shaykh on internet, are you being fed the knowledges of certainty? You know they're interpreting hadith and where a juja majuja are and this one is that and then a political version of the understanding of a hadith and this and that. That's not the knowledge of certainty, that's actually the knowledge of uncertainty because they're making things up. The knowledge of certainty is the ilm al dhuni dev- Divinely knowledges and they're all based on Muhammadan haqqaiqs, you count them maybe on one finger. So it means that they have to be taught Divinely knowledges at the same time by Mawlana Shah Naqshaban they have to be taught from Aynu Yaqeen, the vision of certainty. So then they have to have in their whole curriculum a way in which to teach the children, teach the student visions of certainty. How are you going to reach vision of certainty? By your physical eye? That you went to a market and you stared at the fruit and then you could see the reality of the fruit? It's not a physical vision. You have to be have… you have to have been trained in the spiritual vision. That they taught you how to close your eyes, 
how to focus on your muraqabah, how to make your connection, how to connect to this fires in this energy, not from the whole universe but from the mirror of your shaykh reflecting from his heart. Much more precise and actually the reality of a laser. The laser doesn't take a light from everywhere and bounce it all over the room, <coughs> it takes it from a mirror and they go like 10,000 times back and forth before that power of that laser is coming out and it's in a fraction of a second that it reflects and retracts back and sends it out. The same concept Allah is asking, in your practices to reach you have to have been brought in the presence of a mirror, taught how to make your connection and as a result their fires comes to you faster than the speed of thought and hit your heart and take it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and it begin to burn into your soul its reality. That's Ainul Yaqeen. So you're being taught all these haqqaiqs, you've been trained on how to connect your heart so that your, your heart takes away its rust, take away all its badness, take away all its character so that their ilmu yaqeen when you're connecting and you have an affinity for the shaykh, the Ainul Yaqeen is, is coming and heating you up and many students they have the taste of haqqa yaqeen because immediately they're lighting up when the shaykhs are talking. They light up, they heat up, they understand the knowledges. Some who are trained much more advanced even see the different knowledges in their firasal and in their vision because it's coming with a live force, it's not coming into the head of people. It's coming from the laser of their heart, hit into that heart. And its knowledges are activated with all three because their knowledge is from a sir. It comes as an ilmu yaqeen and it comes directly into the ayn and into the spiritual vision of the heart and it's filled with haqqaiqs and it like a laser breaks through and begin to blossom within the heart of that student and depositing, depositing, depositing. And every talk is a miraj, every talk is a dress from their Divinely Presence, from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad reflecting, satelliting out to the presence of the shaykhs, presence of the shaykhs and reflecting all the way down to their connection. So means that Allah wanted you have this light, you made this connection with these ulul am, they should be teaching this secret. You must be fed from Divinely knowledges, you must be have trained in how to open your ayn and your spiritual vision and as a result you, may have, you must have been dressed in haqqaiqs. You know that what you've been taught is haqqaiqs and realities and that's why every title of a video is a reality, reality, reality because it's not commonplace. It's not about the common fruit stand and then the, what's the cost of this and what's the cost of that. They're all haqqaiqs coming loaded, fulqul mashkhoon, coming loaded into the heart, blossoming based on everybody's specialty that Allah has given to them. Each will take their, that haqqaiq and begin to expand it within their heart to the understandings they have. If they have an understanding in medicine, the haqqaiq begins to blossom in medicine. They have understandings in math, the math ones, they pick up immense understandings of math and mathematics and atoms and all, all of the, the angelic reality because Allah sends it and it begin to expand within their heart and the heart has an infinite capacity. As a result of these knowledges then they must be reaching towards the diya. That through all their tafakkur, through all their contemplation, through all their practices the shaykhs are trying to light the heart. That when Allah is testing the servant, testing the servant, testing the servant then in their tafakkur and contemplation that's why we describe that this station is not easy to reach. These songs that people cry is because they understand this path is not easy, to reach to this fire is not easy. To reach to this fire is requiring everything is crushed, 
continuous difficulty, continuous heartbreak, continuous sadness because it's crushing, it's crushing and crushing until Allah described that which is hidden within you will come out. Because the pearl does what? The oyster wants to seal the secret. The oyster is too occupied to hide the secret. So your body is the oyster trying to hide who you are and be occupied in being an oyster. But the oyster has no value for Allah has no value for anyone. What has value is the pearl. What do you have to do? You have to rip the oyster open because the muscle of it is so strong to hide that the secret and the jewel from Allah So means then this life of testing, this life of fire, this life of difficulty is that Allah wants to open this pearl. And if this pearl opens through the difficulties and the fires and the fire did not overcome the student and they left the path but they persevered through patience and sabr that Allah has a plan and don't despair, don't give up hope. No matter what you think is, is just it's endless, it's, it's no, it's, it's just horrible. It's not, Allah has a Divine plan. Allah created all His creation with immense love. There's something about you that you don't know. When you do your practices, do your, your, your tafakkur, do all of your understandings then Allah send these difficulties and you connect, send these difficulties and you connect until one day they open, they open that pearl and that light that begin to come, you become heated. Because when this fire is ignited, that's a fire and the eternal flame of that person is been lit. As a result of being lit they are heated. The eternal sun in them has now been awoken by Allah And in their practices they heat up. And in their hands they heat up and in their neck they heat up. Why? Because their sun this is the beginning phase of the shams opening within their reality. This is what Mawlana Shah Naqshaban wounds in the path. That you have to pursue the light of you accepting Islam is not enough. The light that you think you understood tariqah and that's it for you is not enough. You didn't get anywhere, you didn't go through any of these oceans. What Allah says, no you just began. Now pursue a path of Divinely knowledges, don't waste your time. Take and feed from ilm yaqeen, continuously training on ilm yaqeen that, Ya Rabbi have to open my spiritual vision, I have to open the reality of my vision and my heart, I want to be from Ahlul Basira, those whom see. And as a result the knowledges that the shaykh is teaching and when your heart is open immense amounts of haqqaiqs are flowing through. Those haqqaiqs are what save us through these fires and difficulties. Because as soon as again a difficulty comes into your life you're connecting and the beatific grace and the mercy of Allah is flowing from the heart. Drinking at fountains and oases of realities that can't be understood, can't even be explained by the tongue, the tongue can't even explain these realities. As a result Allah will begin to open the diya and the sun within the individual. When that eternal light opens this is a gift from Allah That's what Mawlana Shah Naqshaban was giving to Sayyidina Yunus that we have to open this noon. As a result of opening this noon and this sun within you, the ilm yaqeen that you'll be given, the ayn yaqeen that you'll be given, the haqq yaqeen that you'll be given is coming with full force by the time it hits your outer noon, the light that you emit to people is penetrating deep within their heart and their soul. It, it goes past the head, they don't care if you don't understand anything from their talks. 
And there are people who say, I didn't, I didn't understand anything from your talk but then a week later I understood something because it doesn't go for your head. They're not caring if the head understands. With this light that's coming, these knowledges that are coming, these realities that are coming, they're penetrating like a laser deep into the soul. As a result of that dress from Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, Sayyidina Yunus salam came out as Dhul Noon, the two noons because the two noons were activated and when sent back out for his dawah everywhere he talked people were coming towards guidance. And that's the reality of insana comment. This is the reality in which Prophet is the kamil, the perfected guide of Allah and every Prophet and every creation is in need of that. And that's why there's always a Muhammadan representative sent, right? Because Sayyidina Musa wanted this, he said, I want this, I want to be taught a knowledge from realities, something rush that will make me to advance myself. Knew the capacity of what I know is something far greater that I don't know and wanted that reality. So all the Prophets were in need of the perfection of Sayyidina Muhammad and they were not common. They were imperfected requiring the perfection and as a result a Muhammadan guide was dispatched to them to teach them, to give to them, to dress them. And Mawlana Shah Naqshaban's reality then is the reality of the pearl maker. The one whom Allah gave that pearl under his nazar and with his zikr and responsibility of dressing and keeping that dress upon their reality to give to them their inheritance. If they can achieve it in this dunya then alhamdulillah he gives to them and spiritually they'll witness him putting that light within their chest right into the core of their being. As a result of that light they are lit guides, their heart is illuminating, their faces are shining and the knowledges that are coming from them are ilmu yaqeen, aynu yaqeen and haqqa yaqeen. And they are the real insan upon this earth, rest of insan they're trying to reach inshaAllah those whom are trying to reach to that reality. We pray that Allah thank you, dress us from the immensity of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban's teachings and the immensity of the oasis that has been given by the, the <coughs> rahmah to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad that they're never alone and from beginning of time to the end of time Prophet is responsible sending these guides, sending these realities, dispatching these realities for people to reach to their perfection. We pray that Allah give us the ability to understand, give us the sabr and the patience to with, withstand all the difficulties that lie on this path and before us as the earth is in an immense difficulty. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon, salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa, wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.